Let's jump over to numbers now. So you do not put numbers inside the headings of your paper. So when you say methodology, results, discussions, sections and subsections do not have numbers. Again though, there may be a time where you do need to do that because your professor or your journal has asked you to. But usually if you follow APA, uh, no. You should use numerals for these kinds of cases. If you have a number that's 10 and above, then you should write it 10 or 11 for 11 or 12 for 12. So the numeral, meaning the actual number like this, 10. I'm going to write that. I'm not going to write 10, T-E-N, because it's 10 or above. 10 or above, you should write the numeral. And here are some examples. 12 centimeters, the 15th trial, 13 lists, 25 years old, 105 stimulus words. All of these are above 10, so you should write the numeral. 10 or above, 10th grade, so that's 10 exactly, write the numeral. If you're writing in the abstract, you should also use the numbers. And if you're writing in a graphic, like for example, a chart or a graphic, and inside that chart, you're going to have some numbers. So maybe you've got a bar chart like this. If you're writing here, even though the number may be smaller than 10, you still should write the number that way because it's inside the chart or inside the abstract. Numbers that come before a measurement unit, for example, 5 milligrams, 10.54 centimeters, even though, well in this case 10 is bigger than, uh, is 10 or bigger, but even if this number were smaller, even if this number were 0.54, which is definitely smaller than 10, you would still write it with a number like this because it's a measurement. Numbers for statistics, for math, for fractions, for decimals, for percentages, for ratios, and for percentiles should all be written by the number like this. Multiplied by 5, 3 times as many, 0.33, more than 5% of the sample, a ratio of 16 to 1, the fifth percentile, so these are percentile groups, that is groupings, you should always use the number like that. Numbers for times, dates, ages, scores, scales, points, and exact sums of money, you should also use the numbers. One hour, 34 minutes, for example, 12.30 a.m., two years old, scored four on a seven-point scale, because that's a scale. But you need to be careful and remember that if you're going to write something like this about three months ago, that's not an exact time. So you would then, if it's less than 10, you would spell out the word, spell out the number. Started about two days ago. Again, this is not an exact time. This is about time. So in that case, if it's less than 10, you need to write it out. You need to spell it out. Numbers in series, parts of books, tables, lists. Tables, lists, or four or more numbers. So for example, grade eight, table three, row five, these are examples of being parts of something bigger. So in that case, if it's a series, a list, or part of something bigger, then you use the number, even though it's smaller than 10. If you're beginning a sentence, if you're going to write a title, or if you're going to write a heading, in that case, you must spell out the word. As in this case, it's the first word in the sentence. 48% of the sample showed an increase. 2% showed no change. So here we have an example of a semicolon. And remember with a semicolon, we can put two sentences together. And that's what we've done here. We've put two sentences together. But this is not the beginning of a sentence because this is not a period here. This is a semicolon. We're putting two sentences together. So in this case, this is not the beginning. It is a percentage, so we write it as a number. Here, this is a percentage, so we think we should write it as a number, but we have a special case. This is the beginning of a sentence, and the beginning of a sentence, you must spell it out. Here's another example. 12 students improved, 
and 12 students did not improve. Here the word 12 is bigger than 10, so maybe we should write the number 12. But no, because it's the beginning of a sentence, we do not do that. We have to spell it out. If you're writing fractions such as one-fifth, two-thirds, then you need to spell it out. And if you have words and numbers together, then you can follow this example, two two-way interactions, ten seven-point scales. So in this case here, we're going to say two of those. Now here we have two is less than a ten, right? So we're thinking, hey, less than ten, you should spell it out. The problem is, if you spell this out, you would say two two-way. Boy, that's really confusing. Two, two-way interactions. So in that case, you do not need to spell it out. You can use the number two because it's two numbers bumped up against each other. And the same is the case here. Now, in this case, we could say ten, seven, point scales, right? That would be another way to write it. But in this case, because it's a scale and it's on a series, remember we said that scales, you should use the number, not spell it out. So, so here we're going to say seven point scales, and we're also going to use a hyphen because it's like a thing. And here we're going to use ten. Why? Because it's better than saying 10, 7, because if we wrote 10, 7, it might look like 107. So that follows two different rules there, a little bit confusing, but the point is to make it clear and easy to understand. Decimal fractions, so for example, add a zero before the decimal point when the value can exceed 1. 0 0.23, why do we have a zero here? because this number can be bigger than 1. Cones D equals 0 0.70. Cones D can be bigger than 1. It's a statistic that can be bigger than 1. 0.48S. Remember, S, S is going to be standing for seconds. It's a time abbreviation, right? But you would not do that for something like this, correlation of 0.95. You should not write 0 0.95 for correlation. Why? Because correlation has a range of 0 to 1, right? Correlation cannot be bigger than 1. And if it cannot be bigger than, then you cannot add the 0. So in this case, it would be no 0 at the beginning. The same is true for an R value or a P value, because P can only range from 0 to 1, and R also can only range from 0 to 1. So you never use the 0 in front of the fraction. Okay, that's it. That is our headings, and that is our numbers. Pretty straightforward, not as complicated, and not so many exceptions to the rule. But again, I really emphasize, especially for the headings, you need to follow the rules that are given to you. And I have submitted to many journals, and almost in every case, the journal has a special way to do the headings that they like. Some have numbers, some have letters, and some specify a different formatting for the heading. This is just the general APA way, and the MLA is also very not specific about this, they say it depends on who you're sending it to. The key point to remember is in the outline you have, you know, level one, level two, level three, level four. You got to get that into your brain and understand how that works. All right, next we're going to look at some examples.